Hey, this is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan. Well, Daniel Vitellis, you may have heard of him. He's all into this thing called rewilding. He tries to fantasize that he lives a lifestyle like that of our ancestors, doing similar types of activities, eating the same ways as people from tens of thousands of years ago. And on, on his recent Rewilding Yourself podcast, he came out and attacked veganism with a vengeance. If you want to be a vegan, that's one thing, but doing that to your kids will probably quite soon will be illegal. I'm guessing that that's going to get regulated and it's going to be illegal. Um, I'm guessing that because it's kind of a crime against humanity to force a, a nutrient deficient diet onto a child to conform them to a misguided ethical concern. So a vegan diet should be illegal because it's nutritionally deficient. Where do you get this crap from, Daniel? Like, where's your science on this? Even the very boring, the very conservative American Dietetics Association has an official position on vegan diets, and they find them to be nutritionally adequate for all people at all ages, including infants and children. The vegan approach, unfortunately, is so extreme uh, that it's not even sustainable to the point that we can't even find one example of, of a person who's lived their whole life that way. Well, I know a few people have been lifelong vegans themselves, Daniel. Nina and Randa. Yeah, they're young. They're in their early 20s. When they're healthy. They went on like a 20, 30 mile bike ride with me one time out in the hills and they totally kept up. They weren't weak and dropping off. And their parents themselves are vegans too. So we have some generational veganism there, which Daniel denies is possible. And furthermore, here's a young man. He's 19 in this video. I think he's 20 or 21 now, who spent his entire life not only vegan, but raw vegan. Yeah, I've been raw, raw vegan all my life. Um, really had a good, good time on it. I'm not going to change ever. Yeah, so yeah. I don't know, work out at all at the gym. It's just, you know, I um, do peel a lot of coconuts there, as that's my job. Take a look sometime at the top vegan and vegetarian bodybuilders. It's particularly vegan. Look at the top vegan bodybuilders versus the meat eating bodybuilders, right? We'll roll them out and be like, look, it's possible. And you see a dude who's like, 145 pounds and super ripped, but like not really that big compared to people that eat animal food. Just you just can't. There's just not enough protein. And these are people taking supplements. There's not enough protein. Well, apparently there's more than enough protein. And Daniel, stop speaking in these vague generalities. Be specific. I showed you some specific vegan bodybuilders here, and all you can do is offer this imaginary shredded but skinny 140 pound bodybuilder. Look at the vegetarian cultures of the world and have a look at the physiques of the people. You'll see that they are less robust people. Robust, is that what you wanna call overweight robust? I mean, yeah, I'll give you that. Vegans do have on average a more healthy body mass index than even vegetarians who are slightly overweight. And once you start eating meat, forget about it. Yeah, robust. Things have to die for us to live. It's like new life to be formed requires life to be lost in order to fuel that growth. So new creatures are made out of dead creatures. Well, nice try there, Daniel. You're saying when you hunt down an innocent animal and slay it and kill it and eat it, that's the same as me going through an apple orchard and pulling an apple off the tree. Nonsense. I'm not killing anything in that case. The tree, the apple tree keeps on existing. I'm just taking down one of its reproductive parts and eating that as food. And humans hunting is no more immoral or, or moral. It's just amoral. It's just, that's what we do. No, Daniel, taking the life of an innocent animal is immoral. In this day and age, we don't need to go outside and wear furs and carry bows and arrows and hunt innocent animals, the few that remain in our wilds. In fact, you can't even do that here in Southern California unless you earn to hunting squirrels or cats or something like that. We don't need to eat animals in this day and age. I know you disagree with that. I know you think vegans are all deficient and skinny dying people, but that's just simply not the case. And you need to say that in order to, to justify your existence as a guy who likes to eat and hunt his meat and feel good about it. Now, everybody knows that vitamin B12 is missing from that diet. Um, there's really no arguing this, right? The science shows us. One of the things they'll tell us is that vegetarians have um, the same amount of vitamin uh, B12 deficiency as, as, as meat eaters. This is not true. I've covered B12 here countless times. I'm not going to waste any breath. I'll just link to that in the show notes. And by the way, here's my B12 level. Of course, vitamin D, another great example, rich in a well-rounded animal food diet, 
not present in plant food? It's funny how these paleo type guys always say the same stuff. I hate rebutting these same points and over and over again. Vitamin D, yeah, it's not found in food. It's a hormone that's produced naturally in the body by having your skin exposed to sunlight. So get out in the sun, Daniel. Yeah, but there's a lot of stuff that's not in there. And just basic protein. I think it's kind of undeniable that there's less quality protein available and that it's more work to get your protein needs met. No, no, not protein deficiency too. You're rolling out all these stereotype problems that low carbers have with veganism. Have you ever met any person, vegan or otherwise, with protein deficiency? It just simply does not exist for people who are not starving themselves. Shut up with it. So we require these animal foods. We're essentially obligate carnivores. Well, obviously we don't require animal foods. In fact, if you're so concerned about stuff like say B12, which you say is impossible to get on a vegan diet, why don't you just do like I do? Um, I've been vegan now what, six years and just a few years ago, like a year ago, I think I started taking a, a B12 sup. Why don't you just do that? Why don't you just go vegan and just once in a while spray a little B12 in your mouth? What's wrong with that? If a diet is deficient in a nutrient that a species needs, it can't be that species adapted diet. So if you have to get a B12 injection in your bum because it's not in your diet, then that cannot be the adapted diet of your species. All right, Daniel, I hand it to you, you win. Your diet is so nutritionally complete that you require absolutely no supplementation whatsoever. I guess I have to admit defeat here. Oh wait, let me take a look at your website here. Why the heck are you offering so many supplements? If you have this perfect meaty meat diet with all these great nutritional benefits, you wouldn't need any of this crap here. But look at all this stuff. So I guess your diet requires even more supplementation than mine. All I do is spray a B12 sup in my mouth about once a week. It looks like here you guys got to do all sorts of crap all day, every day. And so I know it's motivated from a really just and pretty righteous place. It just ends up being kind of anything but. And I think it's not dissimilar to somebody who really believes they're doing the right thing when they strap a suicide vest on and they walk into a train station and they, you know, detonate it around a bunch of people. So basically, Daniel, you're saying people that eat a vegan diet, one that's been shown to be nutritionally adequate for all stages of life, one that's been shown by science to have the longest lived people on the planet, even longer lived than vegetarians, and a diet that is full of compassion. We know that we can have the world's healthiest diet and not have to kill animals in the process. You're saying we are like terrorists, people that go and bomb a and kill dozens or hundreds of other innocent people? No, you got it wrong. You're the terrorist. You're the guy going out into your wilds out there where you live and hunting innocent animals. You're the guy that's a terrorist. Look in the mirror, bro. When um, I'm getting flack from a vegan, I just try to remind myself that that person's going to come around at some point. Because I did. Sorry ain't gonna happen here. And again, I'm sorry, Daniel, if you failed on your vegan diet. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys, in the comments, but I remember reading that Daniel's vegan diet consisted primarily of kale and olive oil. No wonder why you failed on that. So that's why we made Happy Healthy Vegan, this YouTube channel in the first place, and our Instagram for that matter, where you guys can see what we're eating day in and day out and thriving, not failing like Daniel on his kale oil-based vegan diet. So anyway, that's all I gotta say about this post your questions and comments down below. What do you know? What do you think about Daniel Vitalis? What do you think? Are vegans like terrorists? Suicide bombing terrorists? <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. And um, hit like if you got something out of this video and share it with someone who's in a low carb paleo or Daniel Vitalis's survivalist theories for that matter. And subscribe for more from me and Angie here at Happy Healthy Vegan. So until next time guys and listen up Daniel, this was your problem. Keep it carved baby. Keep it carved. Keep it carved.